Hi all, Mass Barnko from Kaiser Power Electronics here. This is part two of the X-ray system teardown. Take a look at the collimator. See, it's actually a quite narrow um, port that it has here to uh, guide the uh, the X-rays inside for these dials here at the side. You see here there is depending if you are one meter, one and a half or two meters uh, from the person, you have to adjust the window according to these uh, dials here. Now, these dials move around the blinds in here. So that way you can shape the area at which the patient is radiated. You can also insert uh, additional filtering uh, here in these uh, slide-in slots. There is uh, four slots for different um, filtering or shapes. I guess this is uh, very depend it depends on the kind of uh, yeah organ that you want to uh, you want to get a picture of. So you can maybe put something in that only uh, takes a picture of the liver or stomach or lungs as such. So you avoid radiation of uh, body parts that you don't need. It also has this very weird light timer. Um, I'm not quite sure why uh, there is this timer because that's quite... Yeah, if I was lying underneath this and I was sick, that's just... Ugh. I don't like the sound of that. But that activates a few contacts here on the inside. But there's also another contact when this gets all the way over to turn off the light again. There's a little baronet socket here for a small lamp, which will only light through this small hole. And once we get inside, we can see that there is a mirror here, which the X-ray goes straight through. So, let's get the, the shielding off and uh, let's see what's inside. Now, this is a lovely piece of mechanics. Just look at all these uh, blinds, the mirrors the nice brass gears that you can see here in the side view. I just try to turn it, you can see it is actually double blind. It also has these small wings down here that turns along with it. And there is the other double blind here. Ah, okay, so that actually moves something. Ah, okay. So th those two uh, springy ports that we saw underneath, they move along with this as well. Let's just turn it another turn. So you can see the gear action from the side here. Very elaborate uh, gear work here with shafts and a bar gear, arms, cylinders string pull, very, uh, very nice. This is however a little heavy to, to turn. Now, if we take a look here at the side, see there are some contacts, spring contacts here, as well as on this other side here, there's also some end contacts. But then on this side, we have some um, capacitors, which seems to be in conjunction with, yeah, there appears to be two motors down here. I'm not sure what that cylinder there is, but there are two cylinders With these are just the contacts. I'm not quite sure why it would have what appears to be a motor. Okay, it's not connected. There's actually a gear missing here. As you can see, there used to be a gear here, so this uh, actually just uh, is uh, free, turning free. 
same over here nothing is connected uh, to the to the cylinder or motor here yeah but that's basically the the principle of uh, a collimator it can shift oh, here, here we can see how it turns in and out the underside but then the other one yeah, okay it just has a uh, a few plates now this huge item is the image plate and it's a little different from what I expected because I expected just to see a phosphorus plate maybe some kind of um, yeah automatic x-ray detection and then you, you can just put in your cassettes with the, the film in but this actually has a motor with a curved or, um, surface on it here so it can move this plate back and forth in this direction now from what I can gather this is called a grid plate it has 12 rows times 40 so it's simply slide slide it up in uh, a lot of uh, rows and uh, columns also has PB um, that's a uh, yeah, lead. So maybe this is just a lead front plate in front of the actual sensor because as we can see out here this golden part here actually connects down to some connectors but there's maybe 12 wires that's not enough on image sensor so there is also a cassette holder underneath here which can be pulled out like this so this is actually where you place down your cassette which should have the phosphorus plate in it so unfortunately i don't think i have a phosphorus plate in this unit that's a damn shame now let's see if we can because it also looks like this can be opened up by just a single screw here nope that wasn't enough but at least we can pull out. I'm not quite sure if this has any lead in it. It sure is a uh, very thin layer. But uh, it says PB, so should have it. Now that's interesting. One, two, three. Now this is the part that actually has a uh, a connector on it but it does not seem like it's supposed to go out in any way as we can see here we can move it this way okay let me turn the motor there okay so it can't go over the edges take it out yeah I'll have to spend a little time figuring out how to open this up so that's taking apart just as much as it makes sense now this is quite a funny part and I will have to uh, see if I can look that part number up that it had on the other side here because this clearly has a feel to it like it's a grid plate so I'm wondering what this can be used for because as it's shielded up that has to do with light but it's a little too lightweight to actually um, contain elements that would light up on radiation um, so it's certainly not crystals and I think it's too old to be plastic based so I'm not quite sure what that is but it connects to the outside world with this 10 pin connector as we can see it consists of three different cables it's just a single single ground wire maybe then there is a multi conductor cable and another single wire here and the two single wires Go over here for yeah. 
Not really any ground pins or something like that. Just single, uh, single cables. Yeah, that's a little weird. Now the uh, motor drive itself over here has a little uh, transformer that drives a Fulbright um, silicium output rectifier here. Goes backwards over to uh, these uh, open relays that drives the uh, motor through a couple of resistors. Also says revision 44, so that design has gone through quite a lot of phases. It's a nice gear motor, so I think I'm keeping that for sure. Maybe even for a coil winder. Depends how fast it runs and at what voltage, because that is probably something like 115 volt AC. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Should be a DC motor. Yeah, so. There's also, uh, I noticed over here in the handle, there's a little secret compartment here. Not many people know this, but you could put your weed in there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the part two of the X-ray system teardown. This was the image plate holder system, some kind of detector, grid plate. So yeah. Write me a comment if you have much more knowledge about these parts than I do. I would love to know what these can be used for or if others have uses for them. Because if I can't use them, others will have some joy from them, that's for sure. So until next time, see ya!